Hey everybody, welcome to Changing the Dialogue. Uh, we're going to be uh, sitting here talking to my right is Robert French, who is my dad. He has been a, an evangelist, a pastor, an author, uh, 50, over 50 some years in the ministry, started out when he was 16. Um, and one of the things that we are here to talk about is just what's happening in the world of Christianity today. Um, Christianity's thrown around pretty good, pretty lightly today, would you say? Yeah, yeah it's, it's thrown around pretty lightly. Uh, and then when you consider there are many, many forms of it, uh, right. when you say Christianity, it's a pretty broad statement. <laughs> It can be, can be. Yes, very broad. It's a, it's a big state because what what does that mean denominationally, right? What what yes. is it when I say I'm a Christian? Well, most of the time when you ask somebody uh, what they are, or they're a Christian, or they say they're a Christian, the next immediate question is, well, what faith or what denomination right. or what uh, part of Christianity do you belong to? Yeah, and uh, so. Not only do we say we're Christian, then we have to define what that means. Right. And and two, when you look at that, how many people really understand what it is to be a Protestant? Or to what what's the difference even between a Protestant and an evangelical or full gospel? How many people actually really know that stuff? Not too many, uh, because most people and most Christians don't have a real fundamental background mm -hmm. in uh, in Christianity right they most of them through the years that I've talked to and I've talked to many many thousands of people in my experience when you talk to them they don't really have a fundamental knowledge of the Reformation right where we get the word Protestant from or protestant uh, they don't have a fundamental knowledge of even uh, the, the Roman system of religion, they simply uh, relate to, well, I'm a Baptist or I'm a Methodist or Lutheran or yeah. whatever. That's right. Yeah. And when people are, we, we were discussing today, we'll, we'll just bring this up. It's just recent in the times, you're, you're talking about the, the latest and greatest news, uh, Chick-fil-A decides to pull funding from Salvation Army. Um, they pulled funding from another, what was the other organization? I think it was some something called FCA, I think it's- Family. Oh, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, yeah. that's right. Yeah, Fellowship yeah. of Christian Athletes and- And uh, some other uh, organizations that have to do with- with uh, Feeding the poor, feeding homeless. Feeding the poor, hungry, yeah. things like that. So- Family-oriented things. You know, here we have this, what we would call Christian organization. But where does that, see, so define Christian. People are saying, well, because their stance against, say, uh, homosexuality or this or that, all these things come up, or abortion, or you're you're not liberal enough, or this, or conservative, this. Or racist. Or, or racist, or whatever. In the end, you're called a hater. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where does, where do people begin to think about what defines what we call Christianity? And I think that's the big question. And that's the problem that I see in what we're talking about here. Nobody knows how to define it. Well, and it's happening in all kinds of areas. I read an article, for instance, in, in the Christianity Today magazine about a mega pastor for mm -hmm. a mega church. It's a church in Florida. It's a Baptist church. And their their pastor resigned. Their senior pastor resigned for uh, several various reasons. And he'd been there 27 years. And so he felt that one of the reasons is, you know, it's time to go. Well, uh, a pastor that they had uh, considered came and he happened to be black. Well, this is in Naples, Florida, and most of Naples is an Anglo community. And uh, they voted, and uh, the man only got an 81% uh, of the vote. Well, 
according to their bylaws, you had to have an 85% of the vote to okay. be elected. So he wasn't elected. Well, now there's accus accusations of racism and all kinds of things. And there's been, I think it was 18 people have been uh, barred from membership or this, this, this fellowship from it's membership right. uh, by the board for racism. Well, one of the men that they had let go from his membership uh, said that racism had nothing to do with it. It was just simply some questions they had about the pastor. And uh, But instead of just answering a question or doing that, we want to blame racism. So all of these things have gotten involved right. in Christianity today. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, the t I think the tough thing is, and we've talked about this a lot, is I don't hate people. No. And Not at all. The, the dialogue from the other side is all about how Christians hate people. They hate. They're bigots. They're bigots. They're bigots. Not a bigot. You can be a bigot and be a um, an atheist. Oh, absolutely. That when did when did it become um, central to Christianity that hatred and bigotry and all these things just because we disagree with the lifestyle? Yes. Um, the the color of a man's skin doesn't matter. But yet we're defining Christianity in these terms. And when you go back and you're looking at the Bible. Uh, when you read the scriptures, and this is always what cracks me up because you've always said, look, read the scripture for what it says. The, the word Christians used one time once in the entire New Testament, one time, talking about how the Antiochian people called them Christians. They were first called Christians in Antioch. Well, what cracks me up is you read Protestant, uh, Catholic, uh, all types of uh, commentators that look at the time will tell you that the Antiochian people had this pension for naming groups of people. Most of the time, it was done in a derogatory manner. Yes. They, they all say that, that most people try to talk, uh, say that Paul and Silas and some of these other guys gay, uh, started calling people believers Christians at that time. Well, the record doesn't bear that out. No. Because if you read Paul's writings, Paul was very much about the way he said things. You can tell Paul's writings. That's why many people have problems with the book of Hebrews as Paul being the author because yes. of the language. Yeah, right? Absolutely. So... When you talk about that, I don't see how you can say Paul brought this to bear because for the simple fact is he never used it anywhere no. in his writings. No. And I think Paul would have done that. So we have this term Christian. He said we were people of the way. That's right. Believers. Believers. Have faith. Saints. Saints. So, uh, exactly. Uh, the church, the church, which is the ecclesia, you right. know, the called out. So I think this term Christian has been utilized in, in this overarching uh, archetype, for lack of a better way yep. to put it, Excellent. because of what we've created out of, out of the Romish system and these types of things. Somebody calls me a Christian, I don't care. No. It doesn't bother me. No. But yet, it's not who I am. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. And that means that I'm not going to be a bigot or hate people or anything of that nature. But yet we have, we, we're defining ourselves in these ways and we're allowing the enemy to dictate what this terminology means and what a Christian is or isn't. Would you agree with that? Yes. And there's another aspect of it, especially in our day and time, the, the time we live in. Right. And it's been in my lifetime. Now, whether it was always like this, I don't know. You'd have to go back and look at the social aspects of every generation to figure this out. Right. But I know in our day and time, we love to group everybody into one area. We say they're this. And though everybody that 
goes there or attends there or talks about there or any of those kind of things, they're, they're all the same. Right. That's what we do with Christian. We type everybody as what we think a Christian is. Right. And of course, there are many groups that think Christians aren't much. Yeah. And so you get typed. The minute you say you're a Christian, this is what they think of you. You're a bigot, you're a hater, yeah. you're this. Yeah. No matter, you're, because that's what they've spread. That's what they've said. That's what the TV says. That's what the news commentators say. That's what you hear everywhere. And so it's in people's minds that the minute you say you're a Christian, that's what all comes to, that's, that all yeah. comes to their mind. So we do this with, with other things besides Christians. It's true. We type people yeah. uh, in various uh, parts of our social uh, and societal makeup well, that's what they said, so that's how they must be. Without ever asking the person themselves, without ever saying anything to them, without yeah. ever asking them, what do you believe? Right. I remember talking to a new neighbor of mine, and he asked me what I did, and I said, I'm a pastor. And he asked me, well, what religion? I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, what faith? I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, are you a Baptist? I said, no. Are you a Methodist? No. I said, uh, finally, I looked at him and smiled, and I said, I don't believe in religion. And he stepped back about two steps <laughs> and gave me the oddest look. And he said, that's the most fantastic thing I've ever heard. You're a pastor. You don't believe in religion. I said, you're exactly right. <laughs> Religions are man-made, and I don't adhere to any one religion. We call it the Christian religion. Well, there's about 40,000 different denominational uh, areas of that that are registered in our country, and they all have a different doctrine, a different view, a different idea. I personally think the Bible teaches one thing, and I think it's correct, I think it's right, and I think it's, it's one message. And how we get to all these other things is beyond me. But if we separate, and this is the way most of it's happened, yeah. There's a church split. And so yeah. one group splits off, goes over here. So in order to identify themselves from the other group, they change a doctrine or they have a different view of a doctrine or they have a different idea. And so they put that in their bylaws. And that becomes their tenets of faith. Yes. Yeah. And then they split yeah. and then another one comes and then they split and another one comes. Well, how many different interpretations of one verse can you get? Right. So... Christian is, is such a broad term. Personally, I when people ask me, I say I'm a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe in Jehovah, his father. I believe in biblical principle. I believe in biblical truth. So beyond that, you're going to you're you're going to have to ask me then, yes, which truth or what is it? Or what do you think about this? What do you think about this? And then I'll tell you. Because you have to be specific. You have to get to know somebody. You, you can't just know. say, oh, I'm a Christian, and you think, and all of a sudden, I know that person. Even if I'm a believer, and I ask somebody, and they say they're a Christian, that still doesn't mean I know that person. I don't. No. Many people can say, I'm a Christian. But what does that, well, unless, you, yeah, what does that mean? This relatable context of sitting here talking doesn't, uh, define if, if I say I'm a Christian, you go, oh, okay, I believe like you do. <laughs> Not necessarily. <laughs> Not necessarily, right? Right. And you know, there are there are areas where we all probably disagree a little here and there, but there they should be minor. It should be a minor thing. The major truths that we all know and understand don't change. No, they don't. They're there. They don't change. They're what they should be. But it's no different than, say, political parties. One says I'm a Democrat, one says I'm a Republican, one says I'm independent, one says this, one says that. All right, so you're a Democrat. Then all Democrats must believe the same exact way. Yes. All Republicans believe exactly the same way. Well, we know that's not true. Right. There's diversity in political parties. You see some in some, I've seen liberal Republicans. I've seen conservative Republicans. Uh, according to today's Democrat Party, uh, John Kennedy would have been considered a conservative. Oh, 
upside of the Democrat Party today. But I know that there are Democrats still that are more like Kennedy than they are like progressives today. Yeah, progressives that we yeah. see today. Yeah. So, to when you try to lump everybody together be, with a name, it's a very very bad thing to do because you yeah. don't you can't do that. It just isn't done. Not not and keep any sense of order or any sense of uh, of uh, who a person actually is. I agree. And so, you know, folks, I hope you've enjoyed the conversation. These are just basic things and just stuff that we talk about all the time that you see yeah. happening all the time. And the problems that we've had is because we believe our dialogue has gone awry. Nobody wants to discuss anything. We just want to use one word. I'm a Christian and don't talk to me anymore. Sound well, bites. Sound, exactly. Sound religion. But we definitely need to change the dialogue and it needs to be a dialogue. I want somebody to know and understand who I am as a believer. Absolutely. I'm a follower of Jesus. That means my whole life, my mind, my character, my being is a matter of those principles that were set in motion through Jesus Christ, given to us by our creator. And these are the things that we can't shy away from and begin to talk. If, and I think we, we allow it to be an easy way to get out of a conversation yes. too. We say, well, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. And so everybody goes, oh, okay, well, they're, they're, they're a Christian. And it gives us an easy way out of a conversation that we may not even feel comfortable being in. Right? Absolutely. I think most people, especially in, in, in the day and time we live in, and it's been my experience in most of my mm -hmm. walk with the Lord, most people feel like you're always trying to convert them or you're trying to change their ideas or you're trying to change their mind just by conversation. Right. That isn't always the case. Would I like to see people turn to Christ? Absolutely. Would yeah. I like to see people accept Jesus? Absolutely. But I can have a conversation with someone without thinking about trying to convert them. In other words, we can sit and discuss the Bible, for instance. I can discuss doctrine. I can discuss those things and not really have in my mind the idea I want to convert this person. But... I'm going to share my views. I'm going to share what I believe. Now they can accept that or not, but why do we feel nervous? Why do we feel uh, defensive? Right. I can talk to anybody about anything. I've done it. I've talked to people that are atheists. I've talked to communists. I've talked to all kinds of people about their ideas and never felt that I was going to lose my identity or lose my belief or my faith because I talked to them. <laughs> Uh, right. You know, I know what I believe. And so I find it fascinating to talk to people that don't share my views. Right. It's a fascinating thing because for one thing, it helps me understand, gives me a broader uh, way of looking at, at things. Plus, it gives me the opportunity to practice speaking to them. Yeah. Would I, would I like to change their mind and see them come to Jesus? Absolutely. But that isn't, I'm not just standing there beating on them and trying to get them to do it. You know, if, right, if by right. my conversation I right. persuade them, that's okay. And I think that's the point. You know, it's tough because it's hard to explain that because people go, it's well, why aren't you trying to convert? Well, I'm trying to convert. I'm not trying to convert anybody. I'm sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. And if that goes out and they have an ear to hear what is being said to them, absolutely, they will hear and rejoice in what they, in the truth. That's what the scripture says. Yeah. Jesus went from town to town and said the truth. He talked to everybody and anybody. And all he did was tell people the truth. I think the greatest story, and, and dad, I'm going to tell a story he tells all the time, and I think it's the truth of it. We, we, we beat up, you know, we talk about the young rich ruler a lot. Yes, yes. <laughs> but the one of the things that you really come to an understanding of with that is here's Jesus. Here's this man who came to him, was talking to him and asking him this question. What must I, what do I still lack? You know, and sometimes we get people, well, what is it to be a Christian? You know, they may come antagonistically too. Absolutely. 
But yet, here's Jesus. He says, well, you know, go and sell all you have and give it to the poor. Come follow me. After he'd said, you know, I've kept the commandments. Well, there's always, you know, he said, well, he went away sorrowful because he had great riches. And dad's always talked about, he didn't, Jesus didn't chase after him and go, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'll, that's cool. If you can't give it all away, you know, maybe a quarter or a half. And that's cool. That's not what he did. Jesus always just said the truth and you could either accept the truth or not. And I think in what your example there is very real. It's up to us to share the truth. Whether somebody accepts it or doesn't accept it, I can't, I can't make people do that. We'd love to have everybody come to do that. That's what the scripture Absolutely. says. But it's just up to us to share it. And you know, another side of that is this. Neither did Jesus say, okay, you're going to hell. <laughs> right. You, you, sinner, you, you're going to spread hell out of it. He didn't do that either. He just <laughs> left it the way it was. Right. The man made a decision. So Jesus was really ambivalent in one sense of the word. Right. I mean, right. It, did it make, I, I'm sure he it was sorrowful. Him. Sure. It I'm sure us. it broke his heart. I'm sure. But he didn't jump in on the man. He didn't try to beat on him. He didn't do anything like that. He let it go. He didn't try to make him a better deal, as Brian just said. He just said, okay. Yeah. See, our responsibility, I've said this for many years, I am not responsible to convert someone. I'm responsible to tell them. Yeah. I'm responsible to share Jesus. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to everyone. Those that believe will be saved. Those that don't, won't. It's simple as that. But it's Jesus never put the responsibility on. He didn't say go into all the world and convert them. Mm -mm. He said preach to them. Yes. Tell them the truth. Tell them the news yeah. that Christ has come and that he's brought life. That's what the news was. That's the good news yeah. that we can live now is life. Amen. And so that's what he did. That's what the apostles did. Were people converted? Yeah, on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 came to the Lord that day Amen. and became believers under Peter's. But see, what, what we don't ever say, though, is there were more than 3,000 people there. They didn't all convert. No. They didn't all convert. Just 3,000 of them that were there converted. So there were some that still didn't convert, didn't come. Exactly. So that was their choice. Peter didn't stand up and then start railing on them and chiding them and oh you bunch of unbelievers no he rejoiced in the fact of, of there were 3,000 that became believers that's Amen. what he rejoiced in Amen. so we have to understand that yes we have an obligation to witness the truth and to witness the word and witness Jesus to people but it's not up to me to convert them it's up to them they're the ones Conversion is your own decision. Yes. Not mine. Yeah, absolutely. It's a decision I had to make. He made. Or every, Anybody who hears the gospel. Any believer it's ever been, they made a decision. Amen. I can't make people serve God. I can't make them change their mind. I'm not even trying to do that. I'm sharing the truth. Yeah. Believe it or not. Believe it or don't. And I believe that we share it with the conviction of our of, our, of what we believe to be true. So if that conviction is there, then that is persuasive in itself. It really is. So anyway, folks, well, hey, we hope you enjoyed the conversation. And, uh, you know, we're going to be coming back with more. Um, so stay tuned. Uh, again, we're talking about changing the dialogue. There's so much going on out there. There's so many voices, as the scripture says, with so many voices, how do you hear? And uh, we just want to help and encourage people. These are conversations we have all the time just between us. And so we figured, heck, why not talk to you too? Yeah. So <laughs> that's what we thought we would do. If you have questions or a comment about uh, the conversation today, please let us know. Give us a shout. Go to our website. You can uh, shoot us an email from there. Um, you could, there's so many forms on Facebook and whatever the case may be. So please do. Lord bless you, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon.